was a trinity of hideously bad games released for all consoles in 2023, and one member of that trinity is Skull Island Rise of Kong, which I'm playing on my PlayStation 5. King Kong is a classic and endlessly iconic cinematic character, from the groundbreaking stop-motion film of 1933 to Warner Brothers figuring out how long they can wring a whole franchise out of Kong crossing over with Godzilla over and over again. But the legal rights to King Kong have long been a tangled mess, hence his brief foray as a Toho kaiju fighting robot, and so publisher Game Mill was able to pick up the rights to make a King Kong video game. Rise of Kong has been making the rounds online as a friggin' joke in the graphical department. Contrast this horseshit with the last PlayStation 5 game that I reviewed, but you jokers only told me that it looks like Monkey Butt! You didn't tell me that it plays like it, too! I should point out that Rise of Kong has received a patch since the game's initial release. It wouldn't install. I tried five times and my PlayStation 5 refused to install the patch. Even the game's fixes are busted. The game opens with some old lady babbling about legends and monsters while cheap cave doodles that don't really mean anything scroll across the screen. The gist of it is that Kong comes from a long line of Kongs, but all the Kongs died as Skull Island became home to bigger and more ferocious monsters. Until finally Kong and his parent Kongs were all that were left. Yes, they just call all the apes Kongs because the writing is bad. You then have a tutorial playing as Kong's mom looking for Kong her son and Kong her husband on a hunting trip. First impressions are not great. The camera is janky and shivers and jumps everywhere if it comes anywhere near the terrain. The animations and physics have you continuously fall down slopes instead of actually walking along them, and Mama Kong almost immediately clipped into a wall. Yeah, you'll clip into pretty much every solid surface in this game. It's a wonder I never fell out of the game world. And the narration lady also goes on about how it's a nighttime storm going on when you can plainly see that it's broad daylight and the sky looks fine. And if you think those graphical goofs are bad, check out how the game handles texture pop in. Textures just blatantly grow from out of the ground and then twist, mold, and deform as you approach, like the island is made of clay that's being sculpted on the spot, and shadows bug out and don't finalize until after you've stopped moving. This whole thing would be butt fugly and embarrassing on the GameCube, let alone three or four console generations later! The game does have kinda interesting jumping mechanics. Kong jumps higher if you're moving like normal, but he jumps further if you jump while you're dashing. And if you hold L1 and try to jump, you charge a super jump that... honestly doesn't seem to do anything. You just get an arc to see where you'll land. I'd snark that that takes most of the gameplay out of a platformer, but you'll appreciate this feature once you see how bugged the game's jumping is. After a supposed to lose boss fight, King Kong's parents are killed by a red dinosaur called Gaw, leaving Kong to grow up without parentals in the jungles of Skull Island. But the power of being pissed off and wanting revenge leads Kong to grow up really strong, and one day after a roar wakes him up from his nap, Kong just kinda decides to go out and beat the living man shit out of all the island's big monsters. Yes, that is really the entire plot of this Rise of King Kong game. He just woke up grumpy one day and started hitting things. Alright, actual gameplay. In combat, you have light attacks that can chain together three at a time, as well as heavy attacks and grabs. Plus, you can hold the grab button to rip and huck rocks out of the ground for a projectile move. You also have a dodge roll, a block, and a charging shoulder check attack that can be used to parry attacks and stun enemies. As you land hits, you fill up a primal rage meter that grants you temporary buffs, and you have an additional meter under your health bar for special attacks. Okay, it at least sounds like a decent combat system. Until you figure out the game is so clunky and unfinished that half your moves and mechanics are friggin' useless! Every enemy in the game moves faster than you, your attacks do not make enemies flinch to buy you time, and loads of enemies have better range than you to boot. So you can try just hucking attacks around, you'll get your ass kicked. I almost died in the friggin' tutorial. The block and the dodge roll both have a half second delay to them and neither interrupts any of your animations, so they'll never do jack shit. 
picking up and throwing either rocks or other enemies is pretty much worthless because not only does it take forever and leave you open to enemy dog piles, you also aren't given any reticle to aim your damn projectiles. Good luck landing hits on Jack Squat unless it's sitting motionless several feet away, which the terrain is so buggy will still happen. I am fully convinced that the rage meter doesn't actually do a damn thing on its own. You have to pump at least one upgrade into it to tell the dumbass game what you want to actually happen when it works. And the special meter? Bro, there are two special moves in the entire game, and the only marginally useful one isn't unlocked until the 80% completion point. It amounts to two charged heavy attacks that take forever to work, barely do anything, and leave you a giant open target. So how in the hell do you survive combat when none of your attacks do anything? Well, Kong's shoulder check charge move is supposed to be a parry that stuns enemies if you counter their attacks just right, only I'm pretty sure that they didn't program it right, and the dash just stuns most every enemy it touches in one hit. So you dash around stun-locking all the enemies and then land some damage, Repeat ad nauseum. Seriously, this is how every damn fight in the game works. Dash into an enemy to completely paralyze them and then button mash. It requires just enough effort and paying of attention to stay awake, but there's no stimulation or challenge to it. Oh, and Kong supposedly has some execution finisher moves, but I don't think they're even mentioned in the tutorial, and they sure as shit aren't listed in the game's controls. Not like I need them anyway. Another useful tactic is to grab tree trunks and use them as baseball bats to smash enemies with big, arcing heavy attacks. Except if you release the grab button, Kong will drop your weapon and it immediately clips through the floor and it's gone forever. Cripes, what even is this game? But the gameplay doesn't just end at the combat, interestingly enough. I was surprised to learn that maybe only 10% of the game is combat. The other 90% is trying to FIND some combat! I am almost certain that at one point Skull Island Rise of Kong was planned as an open world game because the levels are freaking huge! And despite the fact that every stage is massive with multiple branching paths and backtracks, you are given zero clues as to where the hell you're supposed to go! You just wander around beating up the local wildlife and hoping that eventually you stumble across something! I found this one thing where the game seals you off in an area so you can fight a few animals and when it's done I got a skill point. So was that one of the level's objectives? I guess I was supposed to go this way but I jump all over creation and I can't find a way to go any further SON OF A BITCH! There's a hole in the terrain, and I fell down inside the rocks, and I can't get back out. Ah! Yeah, it's a damn good thing the game drops loads of auto saves wherever you go, because my only way to continue is to manually reload a checkpoint. Cripes. So I wander around this opening area for, no joke, half a damn hour, realizing that I'm running in endless circles with nowhere to go. Seriously, what in the hell am I supposed to- COCKSUCKER! Ah! A completely innocuous jump and Kong got stuck in midair. Again, the only way out of this is to manually reload another autosave. Point is, I'm lost, but hidden in the game's pause menu is a map of the stage, so I'm saved. Just a one problem. The map does not mark where you are, nor does it map where you're supposed to be going. You get NOTHING! And of course there are no landmarks or distinctive terrain anywhere in the stage to help you get your bearings. Do you have any idea how hard it is to make a map more useless than the one in Security Breach? Oh, wait, there's a helpful hint off to the side of the screen. If you push in both shoulder buttons at once, Kong will do a roar that shows you where to go. Awesome, great, finally have some direction. Okay, the roar wants me to climb that gnarled turd-looking tree on the side of this path. There's no problem. Okay, problem. I can't jump any further. Where do I go? Oh, now the roar wants me to climb this hill on the other side of the path. Luckily, there's an easy way to climb up here. Well, fudge.
The map is drowning in invisible walls. The game trains you to climb everything, and then when you get up there, it blocks you off. And now the roar wants me to go back to the turd tree, but I already tried climbing that and it didn't do anything. And now the roar wants me to go down this canyon? Yeah, you probably figured out long before I did that the roar doesn't actually do anything for navigation. It just makes up a few random waypoint markers that never actually mean anything. Your only means of navigating the levels is broken. For the love of God, Zilla, just tell me what you want me to do! Turns out the one path out of, like, six that actually leads further into the stage is a set of vines on one of the rocks that I missed that I can climb. I had to turn to a walkthrough and keep it open this entire level. The whole map is loaded down with so many paths that loop backwards without warning, you will get lost constantly without a guide. I hate this shit! Alright, placed throughout each level are ascension events. Fights where you're locked into a small area and have to kill all the enemies or destroy a few nests without dying. Clearing these events gets you skill points that you can use to upgrade Kong's attacks and his general body. But hold on, you get skill points by clearing the ascension events and not by collecting XP? If there's no experience system, then what's the point of all the enemies that you constantly run into during these levels? There isn't one. You do not get a damned thing for actually fighting any of the enemies. You don't even need the practice, all the enemies behave almost exactly the same. You are always better off just running past and SHOT IN THE HEART! You're not supposed to be able to cross through this passage, so I just rammed into an invisible wall and got stuck again. Ah! Why is this first level so confusing to navigate? Why are there 50,000 paths that lead to nowhere? And why, may I ask, are Kong's feet constantly sinking into the ground everywhere that I run? He's just full on phasing into the earth at all times. No wonder I keep getting stuck. Oh joy, the level has floors that I can't smash through without the smash attack. These, uh, oh, this one red floor I just passed straight through and found a level that I'm not supposed to reach until hours later. Methinks this is going to become one of those garbage games that speedrunners love, much like minor ultra adventures, because this is piss easy to sequence break. And speaking of breaks, ah! stuck again because they couldn't be asked to block off paths that you can't cross. You piece of shit. And I might be talking out of my ass here, but what is going on with the scale in this game? King Kong's entire deal is that he's supposed to be a giant, and yet he's constantly surrounded by rock formations, mountains, and trees that utterly dwarf his size. Several incarnations of Kong have been known to just rip trees out of the ground to use as weapons because he's huge! Here, it's like everything in the game world was scaled to have Kong as just a regular gorilla. You don't feel like you're playing as King Kong, you feel like this is Ordinary Monkey Sim 2023. Minus the flinging of feces, of course. And the levels are so massive, it seems like if everything were to scale, Skull Island would be the size of all of Europe. At a conservative estimate. Finally, I get to the first level boss. The <laughs> <laughs> What is up with Kong's derpy, slack-jawed face in this cutscene? Okay, that settles it. This dev team was taking the piss. The first boss is the Earth Gija, a giant sandworm that pops up so you can punch it in between attacks. It's pretty easy, up until the second phase where all its attacks have shotgun effects to where you constantly get hit without actually getting hit. Basically, you just hit and run it to death while figuring out the invisible clouds of bullshit that surround all of its attacks. Funny thing is, the game has an achievement for defeating any boss without using any special moves, when you don't even unlock any special moves until after the second boss. Even the achievements are busted. The second level is the Jungle Wetlands, where everything's drowning in blue distance fog, so you can't see the ugly-ass stage morphing as levels render ahead of you. This level is also confusing to navigate because every area is a humongous wide open room where you can't see the walls for distance fog and every room has more than one exit. You basically just run forward blindly and hope that a key exit isn't stashed off screen. 
Everything looks the same, so you can never tell where you're going. It's like you're voyaging through purgatory! Right down to otherworldly floating trees that they couldn't be bothered to embed into the ground correctly! By pure luck, I'm pretty sure that I managed to stick to the main path and more or less beeline straight for the boss. And even then, it took something like 40 minutes to cross this level! Why do the game's levels need to be this huge when every last one of them is completely empty? I swear it's just to pad out the game. There's so little actual content here that if you actually know where to go, the game is only three hours long. So yeah, run around lost so you don't notice that there's no game here. And I ran. I ran so far away. I just ran. I ran all night and day. I couldn't get away. There's an ascension event where you have to fight three giant crabs at once, which is a pain since they're a little resistant to being stunned, but luckily one of them got stuck in a corner to narrow down the odds. Well, at least I'm not the only one phasing into the terrain. I full on missed one of the ascension events in this level, by the way, and the game did not care. The one set of objectives that you're given doesn't even matter. All the game cares about is that you get to that boss. The Wetlands boss is a giant enemy crab called King Dengis, and I'm not entirely sure how this fight works. I just kind of kept dashing around him until I got a general feel for when he hits you and I got my shots in. And now that I've killed King Dengis, I've saved up eight whole skill points to assign, which should get me a nice new- wait, what the hell? Okay, I've been spending my skill points. I distinctly remember that I spent five points to upgrade Kong's general traits and another five points to give him armor during his rage mode. But now, neither of those upgrades are marked as collected, but the points I spent on them are still gone. This shitty goddamn game wiped out my upgrades and it didn't even refund me the points for them! I have never seen that happen! I've never seen a game so piss poorly programmed that it flat out forgets what upgrades you've bought! The game only has a small handful of skill points in the first place and now a huge chunk of them are just gone! Eat shit! <sighs> The next level is the Dark Jungle, and it's pretty much more of the same. Big, flat open rooms with few obstacles that it still takes 40 damn minutes to cross because the game hates you. Nothing really new to say about this level, other than the enemy AI is starting to show its hideousness. This whole conga line of dinosaurs can't navigate slopes, so they just stand at the edge of the cliff glaring at me. And this dinosaur I had to fight for an ascension event just hid in the corner, actively running away from me instead of trying to fight. I guess I can't blame him. I'd run from King Kong too. The boss of World 3 is a trio of dinosaurs called the Death Runner Council, and just look at how this fight goes. Alpha, the purple one here, is standing still. One of the bosses is just sitting on ass staring at me while I pound his dumb ass into the dirt. And the other two weren't much better. They all seem glitched to where if you start attacking them, they just sit there and take it. How much more broken can this game possibly be? You have got to be kidding me. Once you kill the stupid Asinski brothers, there's a cutscene of Alpha getting back up to try and attack Kong, and this cutscene has a still image placeholder still left in the middle of its animations. How do you miss something like that? Funnily enough, the game never actually tells you what you get for defeating any of the bosses. The game just slips up a notice of, Hey, you can upgrade that super jump from the tutorial now! Okay, cool. I guess that means I got the super jump then. Let's just peruse the upgrades for it. Um, okay, two of my three options for upgrading the super jump are lower base cost and easier to land. Neither of those make any sense! The super jump doesn't have a cost and easier to land? It's a jump in a video game! You land automatically! What in the hell do these upgrades do? 
And yeah, I'm starting to notice a lot of broken English in the game's text, like the unpause button. Close the pause menu and back to the game. What? To climb, you should only approach climbable branches. I love how that's worded to imply that climbing doesn't always work. Primal Rage Depleting will last longer in combat. What does that mean? Okay, I have to know now. Where is the developer located? Developer is Iguana Bee, headquartered in Chile. Native language is Spanish. Okay, good. They're not dumb. They're just foreign. That, that came out wrong. It is curious how Kong manages to hold an enemy close to his hand, but never actually in his hand! And if you grab an enemy that's dead, they despawn, so you're holding nothing! Level 4 is a big cave, and this is the easiest level to navigate in the game, probably. The whole stage is a narrow hallway with minimal forks in the road. You can always see exactly where you want to go without getting lost. In theory. Two different times I got turned around without realizing it, and one of those times my bum ass wandered back into the previous level. Part of the problem is the cavern has passages back to each of the game's other levels, for some reason, and when you go down these warps and come back, you've completely lost track of what you were doing. It doesn't help that the game's autosaves trigger whether you're coming or going, and the enemies and health pickups constantly respawn, so you can never tell where you've already been. Not to mention all the times you have to reload a save and just spawn in the middle of nowhere because you got stuck in a wall. But getting stuck in a wall can't be that common. <laughs> can it? so much. I found a few more red rock floors that you can pass right through for no reason, and I'm starting to think that it's not a game bug. I think they did that on purpose. See, the ground pound move that's normally required to open these floors, you don't get it until the end of this level. By which point I think the devs realized you have zero reason to backtrack to any of these areas because there's nothing in the game worth backtracking for. So because they screwed up the order of the upgrades, they bugged these floors on purpose so that you can actually use them. Rise of Kong is so broken that they had to patch it with more bugs! The fourth boss is the Queen Spider. She goes down one of three paths, spawning a bunch of enemies, and the spider enemies are a problem because they can stun you. And to kill her, you have to knock her out of the ceiling and just hope the minions are cleared enough to damage her. It should be a really tough fight, but it was actually a piece of cake because I had found the exploit. I took a chance on actually spending my skill points again, and there are five categories to dump points into. You can upgrade the charged and ground pound attacks that you never ever use. You can upgrade the crappy super jump to deal damage even though you have zero business ever using the super jump in combat. You can upgrade the rage meter to actually do stuff. Or you can upgrade Kong to where he gets regenerating health. Gee, tough choice. Do I marginally improve wholly useless attacks or turn Kong into Wolverine? And yeah, since Black Arachnia here leaves you alone until you hunt her, the health regeneration makes this fight a joke. Up to the final level, the Skull Island Wasteland, and this... This is where I completely lost my patience for this piece of shit. I wandered this level for hours trying to find the damn boss, and for hours on end, every single path that I took either led to a dead end or led to a giant backtracking circle that looped somewhere I'd already been. Hours wasted wandering aimlessly and helplessly because this game couldn't decide what it wanted to be. 
Rise of Kong seems like it was built to be an open world game. It was built on the assumption that everywhere you go, you'll be wanting to backtrack to previous areas to explore everywhere with all the new upgrades and discover all kinds of new stuff. But it's not open world. The objectives are always laid out in a linear path straight to the boss. There is absolutely nothing to do in this game except go for the boss, and there is never even remotely a single set of circumstances where you will ever want to go back to previous areas, because there's nothing to explore for, there's nothing else to the game, there's nothing else to do but go fight the boss and be done with this shit! So all these looping paths don't do anything except confuse you and waste as much of your time with dead air as possible! I had to resort to painstakingly following a video walkthrough almost literally step by step to get to the final boss because everywhere you go it's one path that leads forward, anywhere from two to six paths that lead backward, and your best dumb luck guess as to which one is which. And there's nothing wrong with having open areas in a platformer. 3D Mario games have open areas. They also have striking landmarks. The terrain has so many memorable objects in it that it's easy to navigate. You never get lost. Everything in Rise of Kong looks the goddamn same. You can never tell where you are. You can never tell where you've been. You can never tell where you're going. And you keep having to reload the random spots because you're stuck in the fucking terrain! If you actually stop to fight the enemies in these last two stages, you'll find that new enemies just instantaneously materialize once the first ones are dead. Because why even bother hiding how cheap the game is at this point? But a few times that I stopped to fight the enemies, I did see this. Hey buddy, what you doing? All your friends tried to kill me and now they're dead, but you seem positively docile. Just sitting there, chilling. I even put my head directly into your mouth, but you won't eat me, will you? What is it, going on a diet? Yeah, good for you. I really need to get serious about weight loss. I have an exercise pad knockoff console that I need to try some time. Maybe that will help. Oh, and the last ascension event before the final boss, this happened. One of the enemies spawned on the other side of the wall, sealing off the fight. I just... How does shit like this happen? Finally, you make your way to Gaw, the dinosaur that killed Kong's parents. And Gaw is a cheating bastard. Or bitch, I don't know its gender. A cheating bastitch. Gaw has a roar move that you cannot dodge or avoid under any circumstances, and it freezes you in place for like eight full seconds while Gaw runs over and knocks off a full quarter of your health bar. Your only hope is to get one or two shots in and then mash the crap out of the dash and dodge roll buttons, hoping you can get far enough away for the roar to wear off in time and that you can dodge at the last split second before Gaw hits you. Luckily, you move at the same speed as Gaw, so if push comes to shove, you can just run away to recover health. If it's good enough for Eternal Darkness, it's good enough for King Kong. So Gaw dies, and now you are become King Kong, the king of the monsters, or whatever. The game's over. Truly, Kong has risen. And there's a bizarre title in the credits where outsourcing was done by some company called Dead Monkey. Clearly, you curse yourselves, and there is no other explanation for this atrocity. Want to hear the least surprising news ever? Skull Island Rise of Kong was developed in less than a year. One of its developers spilled the beans on how this thing happened in an interview with Verge, and to put it simply, Publisher Game Mill is a weapons-grade douche canoe. Game Mill gave the developer exactly one year to make Rise of Kong from scratch, grievously underfunded the game so the developer couldn't afford to keep experienced staff, the team was minuscule between 2 to 20 people at any given time, and Game Mill wouldn't even give the dev team all the information that they needed to make the shittin' thing, which forced the devs to plow forward on sheer guesswork. And these conditions are not unique to Rise of Kong. Game Mill is also known to have its devs make generic prototype games in advance so they can just paste whatever random license over it later. And I can already promise you that someone has written out in the comments, Hey, 
Hey, wait! Game Mill made this one Nickelodeon fighting game that I like. The one fluke that worked out because a broken clock is still right twice a day. But you know what else Game Mill has published? Big Rigs! And its asset flip re-release, Midnight Racing Club. And fellow worst of 2023 contender, The Walking Dead Destinies. So go ahead and bring up that Nickelodeon game. I will kick you in the shin! So knowing that the game got screwed royal by its publisher, I guess you can forgive Skull Island Rise of Kong and the fact that literally nothing about the game works right. Combat doesn't work since everything is so hideously unbalanced that your entire arsenal is worthless. All except for the one attack I'm convinced is bugged to stunlock everyone. Platforming doesn't work since you'll regularly just get stuck and forced to reload a checkpoint. The skill tree doesn't work because even if all the upgrades were good and functional, which they aren't, the game has a non-zero chance of just wiping all your upgrades at a moment's notice. Navigation doesn't work because the map doesn't show you jack, the waypoints mark nothing, and there is no form of signposting whatsoever. The levels don't work since each is just miles and miles of empty space with objectives that you can skip and enemies that are useless to fight. The cutscenes don't work! They still have placeholders left in! Even the bosses don't work! Some of them don't fight you, some are just shattered by the right upgrade, and some you have to just guess when they'll actually hit you! The game is such a disaster zone that bugs were added in on purpose to fix the upgrades! There is nothing, not a single damn thing of quality in this whole sad sack of shit! Other than just the fact that it finally put Game Mill on everyone's radar as one of the worst publishers around. We've got two other legendary bad games of 2023 to get to, but they're gonna have to wait a bit longer. I've got a request from a friend that's been left alive for a little too long.